tis me again. Tis I. I am me. GPS routing not advised. Oh well. Um. Turn right on Raffi Road. I miss having a body that works well. You know, I miss having a body that I can just drive go for a walk or climb a hill. Then turn left onto I-64 West. Really missing it. I was wondering, do you think that if you get your stomach stapled and you, or whatever you do and you lose a lot of weight, do you think that I would be able to have my body back? Do you think I would be able to do stuff like I used to do? Because I am about 100 pounds overweight. Maybe 90. Oh look, there's a... There's a water wheel. Up there. Let's turn around and go look at that, okay? Oh, I wonder if it's a... Like a heritage place. Let's go check that out, okay? I like checking out things. Let's turn this GPS thing or turn this In camera point, around. Three. Okay, we're going back. We're gonna see this thing. It's right beside the Virginia Shenandoah Agricultural Research Station. I think that's all those white buildings. But I may be wrong. I've been wrong before. I'm wrong very often. Virginia Tech. Tootling about, back road exploring. Parking lot closes at dark. Isn't that neat? Look at that. That's very pretty. See the sluice? Let's see if I can show you. Is that what that's called? That little chute there? Is that called a sluice? Day, going where she shouldn't.
I feel very safe at home in Canada doing this. Very safe. But here, not so much. I don't know why. I think because there's more crime in the United States. Grist Mill Lane. This is actually probably a very safe place. It's such a beautiful day. to get out and walk. My back is really hurting. I think I'm going to get out now, take you with me, unstick you from that thing, bring my phone and you. Oh, oh I needed a walk. Well, I'm going to go for a walk, but I'm quite stiff. All this stiffness is no good. I want my body back. I really do. I like these buildings. Isn't that interesting? The McCormick Grist Mill. You know, I wouldn't have found this nice place if I hadn't have come here looking for that other place. Across the road, you'll see the entrance to a walking trail to the mill pond created to power the mill behind you, winding for a little more than half a mile along Marl Creek through oak woods and meadows. The walk is designed to highlight some of the changes in wildlife and agriculture land management since the times of Cyrus McCormick. I might need to do that.
Oh, uh, this reminds me of Holland. Remember when we went and saw the windmill? How it, the wheat came out from up above? It was like seven stories up in the windmill at, in Holland. A grist mill. A monument historic. to live here. It must be a cool place to live. Ooh, look at that stone. That would come over and go on there and grind the wheat. Isn't that interesting? This has all been restored. What about a bench like that? That's a nice comfy bench, don't you think? Gone are the days when we would just sit on a bench like that. Don't know if I ever had a day when I would have liked that. Yes, indeed. If this was your house, you would have a spinning wheel, but you would not have a loom. And the reason you wouldn't have a loom is because England outlawed looms in the colonies. They weren't to have looms. They were to buy their fabric from England and their soap. All those things that England made that they wanted them to purchase. But there was a man, a weaver, who had a loom and he took it all apart and he had it in his wagon and he would come to your house once a year and all the yarn that you had spun all year, he would weave into fabric for you from which you would make clothes for your family. So that's why you got one outfit per person. You had your Sunday go meeting clothes and your one outfit, which you better not hurt wreck. Oh, that was home. So here's the mill where they would go to work. I love to pretend, you know? I just love to pretend that I live there. I used to pre go into the woods and pretend that I was living in the woods and that's this was my home and this was my rock I sat on and you know, when I was a child. I guess I never grew up. Shall we look downstairs first? Ah, the chute through which the flower comes. It's been ground up upstairs. See, the windmill would turn those in Holland, but here, everything is turned by the water. I guess the water would go through the outside wheel and turn this here, which would turn this and the cogs as they went around, it would turn that. And this whole thing would turn. The wind, the water would turn that, I guess. Now this would turn. As this turned from the water, this would turn. So this whole thing is together, which would turn that and would also turn this. And they were both being turned. Interesting. So they would have two grinding places, I guess. Who knows? Huh. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Am I supposed to be able to step down there?
where Cyrus Hall McCormick invented and in 1831 demonstrated the first successful reaper to introduce the era of farm mechanization, a historic landmark of agricultural engineering. Because that was all the metal there was to protect the wall. Now, the water had to come in through the top, which it no longer does. Hmm. Farm and Workshop, a Virginia Historic Landmark. Ooh, look at this, the blacksmith shop, which the first practical reaper was built by Cyrus McCormick. Would have been the forge. Oh, look, see that name on that blade there. Cyrus M. Cyrus H. McCormick. Or Cyrus McCormick, I guess. It's a well used anvil. Can you imagine building that? Wouldn't that be fun? Very interesting. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Plow. Well, I guess, yeah, it's hand plow. But yeah, you have a horse pulling it. Maybe this was the house. Conceived plans, built and tested 1809 to 1884. In six weeks time when he was 22 years old. At 15, he invented a lightweight cradle for harvesting grain. His father had started a project that Cyrus picked up where his father left off. His reaper. Interesting. Ah, uh, I shall write on here. What's the date?
This was the house, wasn't it? This is archaeology. Gee, they're going to do archaeological digs where we live one day, aren't they? A hog oiler. <laughs> Oh, used by hogs to provide relief from insects and offer skin protection. Held oil. Grooved wheels or cylinders. They would rub up against the wheel, causing it to rotate and dispense oil onto their bodies. See how it's going sideways so that you could actually make it roll by rubbing against it. Cast iron. 1913 to 1923. 20 patents. <laughs> Desirable antique now. Oh, that's it there. Oh, I see. That is the hog oiler. Hmm. Pretty short. I guess you put it up on a log. Interesting. Oh, this was the reaper. Look at that. Wow. I guess. I don't know if that's the same one he made. I doubt it. Look at all that. Maybe. Interesting, eh? It's a hay fork, right? Oh, I like this thing. That's very good. So you can hold it. That's a huge thing. That's what they used before. Oh, and this is for flax, is it? You take the flax and you pull it through there? What does that say? Hackle. Uh-huh. Used for dressing flax, hemp, or jute. Yeah, you take the fibers and you throw it on there, the, the big grain. Throw it on there and you pull it through. And you keep doing that until you have cleaned your fiber. What a beautiful spot. With a photographer and everything. Oh, this is it. Okay, I see. This is it. So it pulled that way, and this would hit the grain against there, and it would cut it off there. And this was, as this rolled around on the dirt, it turned the wheel which turned that cog, which turned this one, which sent the blade going back and forth to cut the grain as this pulled into the grain, and it would all stack up on here. And the thing was to keep it from falling off. Good plan. This is the McCormick Reaper. So you have your animal in here. It forever changed the work of cutting grain. Five men do as much as this one thing. Ten acres. Less waste of grain and cleaner swaths for sheave time. The bundles were still hand tied. The first practical reaper.
Bridget won the highest award of the day, the gold medal, at London's Crystal Palace Exhibition. And he became a world celebrity. So it transformed society. 90% of the population farmed in 1831, today fewer than 2%. Isn't that interesting? It's good. I'm glad I came here. It's amazing what you find when you just wander around, dare to get off the main road. Oh, it's a cat. It looks like a bobcat or something. one, aren't you? You are. You're a nice kitty. Meow. Hey, kitty, kitty. I need to download a tree app. This is the American Elm. Now the elm has straight branches. I mean, they are not crooked all along the way, whereas a hop hornbeam is crooked. Pignut hickory, important for timber in the southern Appalachian. I love 
the sound of the cardinal. I grew up with that sound. It's very safe in this woods. There's, I don't think there's ticks. I don't feel that I have to worry about ticks falling on me. Maybe because I'm not walking in grass either. The stream as a wildlife highway. In today's world of fragmented habitats, stream corridors provide natural crossroads and travel lanes for all types of wildlife species. How do we know? Notice all kinds of animal tracks and signs left in the soft sand by wild visitors that come here for a drink or a meal. Even if we come at the wrong hour to see the wild animals themselves, we may see scat left behind, mussel shells piled up on a rock, holes in the stream bank or trails leading to and from the water. A detective story for us to solve. We are protecting the stream corridor knowing how important it is to, to wildlife. Isn't it interesting that we figured out that humans need the same things the wild animals do? Clean water, clean air, trees for shelter, a variety of food. When we protect wildlife corridors, we are also protecting our own future. Yay! What is this? A swamp chestnut oak. Oh, maybe, is that referring to this or that? Or maybe they're both the same. No, this doesn't look like an oak particularly. That looks like an oak. I like the water in Canada. It's always clear. Over in the meadow where the... They mow it once a year. I leave it for the flowers and seeds. For browse, for deer, shelter, food, migratory birds, songbirds. It's a permanent home for mice, voles, rabbits, insects. Excellent fast food restaurant for predators like foxes, hawks, owls, bats, and bluebirds. It's a bob white. Oh, what kind of hawk is this? Huh, this is the hawk I keep seeing, I think. A meadowlark, bluebird. Here we go, now we can head back. This plant, this tree, is called Black Haw Vi Viburnum. Is that N? Viburnum or, or Vibumum? Viburnum. 
This is a widely distributed native lowland flowering shrub. The species is known for its massive clusters of white flowers on which typically bloom in late May. Well, it's late May. I guess it's already done the blooming. This is the McCormick Farm, and it is at 128 McCormick Farm Circle, Raphine, Virginia, R-A-P-H-I-N-E, area zip code 24472, or you can look it up at www.arec.vaes.vt.edu. Slash Shenandoah Dash Valley. The center office is five four zero three seven seven two two five four five five. From I eighty one, take exit two hundred five east. Turn left onto McCormick Farm Circle. From US eleven and Steele's Tavern. Travel west on Rafine Road and turn right onto McCormick Farm Circle. And this is the Mill Pond Trail at the McCormick Farm. And you saw it here last, but you can probably see it elsewhere. Goodbye, thanks for coming along with me. What is that bird over there? Is that a robin? Is it a catbird? I think it is gone. It's just the white oak. Chew! I think that's the cardinal. Hmm, what is this? A staghorn hickory. Look at how big those leaves are. There it is, right up in there. It's a cat bird. Sounds like a cat. Meow! Meow. Honeysuckle bushes. See, in the south they're vines, but these are bushes. Mill Pond naturally attracts all types of wildlife. In the pond itself, largemouth bat, large bass and sunfish
fawn. Even in the shallow pond, there are deeper places where some big fish and turtles live. Hey, that's a water bug. That's one of those back swimmers that bite. That's a great water beetle. Those must be the sunfish, the largemouth bass. That must be a snail, and that's a crawfish, is that right? Dragonflies. Damselfly. Great big turtle, little tiny duck, wood duck. Hmm, what's that one? Mallard ducks fly the shallow waters. Where's the mallard? There he is. Dabbling for food items while wood ducks use adjacent hardwood trees for nesting and cover. Great blue herons. Green herons. Where's the green heron? I don't see him. And kingfishers. Where's the kingfisher? Don't see him either. Love to fish the shoreline, looking for a meal of small fish, frogs, and crayfish. The pond banks can also be home to muskrats in the fall. In spring, there are flocks of migratory waterfowl that depends on the McCormick Farm as a safe stopover on their annual migrations. In fact, too many Canada geese have become year-round residents, called causing eutrophication. Eutrophic eutrophication. Eutrophication. Hmm. Oh, that's a Canada goose. That's what that is. Yeah. It's got. It's missing something white there. Those are wood duck nest houses over there. But there's not a pond now. It's a stream. What is that? This plant, this tree, is called Black Haw Vib Viburnum. Is that N? Viburnum or, or Vibumum? Viburnum. This is a widely distributed native flower, lowland flowering shrub. The species is known for its massive clusters of white flowers, and which typically bloom in late May. Well, it's late May. I guess it's already done the blooming. This is the McCormick Farm, and it is at 128 McCormick Farm Circle, Raphine, Virginia, R-A-P-H-I-N-E, area zip code 24472, or you can look it up at www.arec.vaes.vt.edu.
slash Shenandoah Valley. The center office is 540-377-22545. From I-81, take exit 205 East. Turn left onto McCormick Farm Circle. From US-11 in Steele's Tavern, travel west on Rafine Road and turn right onto McCormick Farm Circle. And this is the Mill Pond Trail at the McCormick Farm. And you saw it here last, but you can probably see it elsewhere. Goodbye. Thanks for coming along with me.